Please stand for the Palm Sunday Gospel if you are able. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it. Bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. And as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven! Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The procession. still coming from all over. <laughs> Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please join me in the prayer. Holy God, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, comes to Jerusalem and is praised with palms and hosannas by the crowd. Bless these palms which we present as tokens of the praise and adoration of our hearts. Keep us close to our Savior. May we endeavor to be faithful disciples, following Jesus by your grace and empowered by your Holy Spirit. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Well, children, thank you for helping with this procession this morning. You may rejoin your families. Congregation, please be seated. Remember, if you brought a child, you must take one home. It is my joy to welcome you to this celebration of the Lord's love on this Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday. Palm Sunday, of course, begins with the reading of the Gospel for Palm Sunday, which we just enjoyed, accompanied with the procession. And then by the end of the service, we have turned our attention to the passion of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and we are well prepared for Holy Week. Please remember that on Monday, Thursday, we will have Holy Communion here in the sanctuary at 7 o'clock in the evening, and you are most certainly expected to attend. 
You'll note that there is a flower insert uh, in your bulletin for Easter flowers. If you wish to uh, subscribe for Easter flowers, please do so immediately today and place the uh, information into the offering plate. We are also receiving today the One Great Hour of Sharing offering, and we urge your continuing commitment to that. I'd like to announce that there will be no adult Sunday school class following worship today, nor next Sunday, but it will resume thereafter. And uh, I thank Tim for his leadership with the class. Following worship today, we will uh, enjoy the deacons' fellowship time in the lounge. Do please come. And also, I should make mention that uh, following that, there is the annual Easter egg hunt. And that will be held outside. I hope you've brought your mutters today. And uh, we will be gathering the children for the Easter egg hunt following the deacon's reception. A word of thanks to the Board of Deacons. We have concluded our Wednesday evening soup suppers. Uh, I want to thank you for your leadership, the delicious soup, and a, a very important time as we gather throughout Lent to, to study the Word of God. It was a great success thanks to your leadership. I should mention that new directories, new new directories are available out in the narthex. There have been some corrections. And uh, in keeping with that, do please pick up a new directory. And uh, it should be fairly, fairly accurate. Although things change from moment to moment. Now you probably saw that candy sales are occurring today. I want to thank the ladies in the mission uh, committee to, uh, who have prepared the candy for sale. The funds raised for that uh, go to support our many missions. And I've been advised to instruct you that there is a vast variety of types of candy out there to be certainly enjoyed. Uh, I have to just turn away as a diabetic, but it looks abs absolutely sumptuous. I'm trying to think of the spring fling, of course, as noted in the, uh, in the insert in the bulletin for the ladies. Do please pay attention to that. Now, I have many, many announcements today, and I apologize if I've missed any of them. Uh, you certainly can catch up with one another during Coffee Fellowship. But on a very serious note, we would like to express our Christian sympathy to uh, Robert Tao and his family on the death of his wife, Romaine. Uh, she died this week. She had been battling cancer and... Uh, how good it is to know that our true and everlasting hope is in the Lord and that it may be a time of sadness now, but Easter will be coming. The proof of God's amazing love is this, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, and so we dare with confidence to approach the throne of God's grace. Let us unite our hearts in the prayer of confession. Blessed are the poor in spirit, Jesus said, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek and those who mourn, the merciful and those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the peacemakers, the pure in heart, and those who are persecuted for Christ's sake. O Lord, we who long for your blessing confess that these words convict and confound us. We are your children, but we seldom seek you. We are your children, but we barely resemble you. We hope half-heartedly for your kingdom to come. Merciful God, we want to stand before you without shame. Unite us with the saints who look to you and are radiant with your blessing. Let us take a time of silent prayer. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. And so I declare to you the good news of the gospel in which we stand. Jesus Christ is Lord. In him we are always forgiven. Thanks be to God. Please stand.
Little children, let us love one another, for love is from God. Peace be with you. Please greet one another. And with you. Peace be with you. Hey. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, getting there. Getting there. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, just give me his tag and his... Uh, okay? Very good. Thank you. I forgot something. Uh. <laughs> morning. Getting there. Thank you. Have a seat, Phil. Peace, Walt. Have you started, have you started your, your treatment? Good morning, children. Oh, huh. There. Good morning. Have a Pez. No, I don't think so. Can you guys come give me a hand? Would you like one? Oh, come on over. Everybody in the back? You don't like those? Oh, put it in your pocket. Put it in your pocket. Trust me, you'll find it in a few weeks. Good thing I brought a backup and a second dispenser today. Would you like a Pez? Like a candy? Oh, not the whole thing. <laughs> Here's one for you. Yeah. And one for you. What? No, that's okay. You hold on to it. Did I get everybody? Are you all here? I often ask myself that question. Am I all here? My word. Let's see, what else do I have up here? Well, it is, uh, it is Palm Sunday. And uh, we have a celebration on Palm Sunday because Jesus is entering the city of Jerusalem. Where did I put the other things? My word. Oh, they're down here. You know, when you wear all these robes and stoles and things, things get lost. I'm in here somewhere. Well, we celebrate Palm Sunday when Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem. And we remember that people were so glad to see Jesus that they put down their cloaks as he marched into town and they took palms, leafy branches, and cut the palms and they used them in a very low technology way for celebration, for woohoo, waving them. So the problem is you can't really put woohoo in a liturgy. Okay? But that was kind of what was happening. They were really excited. Now, you take these palms and you keep these palms to remind you of being excited about having a Savior, Jesus Christ. Not just on Palm Sunday, but all throughout the year. Now, I have to tell you the truth. I always got in trouble on Palm Sunday. When I was a little boy, you could count on it. I'd have the lecture before Palm Sunday. And then I would just do the opposite. And instead of treating the palm as something of celebration and something to remind me about being grateful for Jesus, do you know what I used to do with them? 
I was Zorro. <laughs> I would just have so much fun with these palms. So I feel obligated to remind you, as all old people do, don't be swinging these, way, these palms around. You might put your eye out. Be careful with them. Now, one of the things that sometimes people do with palms is they take them and weave them into crosses. And that's another way that they get to remember to be grateful and excited about Jesus, not just on Palm Sunday, but throughout the year. These were made for me last year by people here at church, children. One young lady, Miss Nadia, made this one for me. It says, God's love is forever. So today you are being entrusted with something very special, a palm. It reminds you to always be grateful for Jesus. It reminds you that you could stick it perhaps behind a, behind a picture. And so when you see it in the morning, you can say, Oh, that's right, I have a Savior Jesus. You can make it into a cross if you'd like and keep it around your room. And it would remind you that I have a Savior, Jesus. And so the point of Palm Sunday is to praise the Lord, just like the people did in the ancient times, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Why? Because who comes to Jerusalem? <laughs> this is your part. <laughs> Jesus, that's right. Let's have a prayer. <laughs> Loving Lord, thank you for the children whom you have come to love and save. All your children of all ages. We ask that the palms would inspire our hearts to remember the joy that we have because we have a Savior, Jesus Christ. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Well now, if you'd like, Sunday School begins, or you may rejoin your families as we stand to sing Hosanna, Loud Hosanna, number 197. be seated. Let us join together in the prayer for illumination as we come to the Word. Living God, help us so to hear your holy Word that we may truly understand, that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do, through Jesus our Lord. 
Amen. I am not going to walk up there. My voice is loud enough. I'm going to... <coughs>
the Gospel of the Passion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as recorded in the 15th chapter of the Gospel according to Mark, verses 1 through 39. As soon as it was morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priest accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews. They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus, Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with, them, with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, 
Lama Sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. Here ends the gospel of the passion of Christ. <clears throat> Grace to you and peace from God our Heavenly Father and His Son Jesus Christ our Lord. They acclaimed Him the Messiah as He entered the city of Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. It was an absolute celebration with singing crowds, waving palms, dancing joyously all along His way. It was like a parade with people all giddy and filled with excitement. But just as every parade has an ending, this parade would have one too. Judas would betray him into the hands of his persecutors. He would be brutally interrogated and beaten to within an inch of his life. When Pilate would attempt to give him a way out, he would not take it. And when Pilate offered the crowd an obvious positive choice, the crowd rather chose Barabbas, the insurrectionist and murderer, and cried out in their frenzy, Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate would then wash his hands of him, turned over to the soldiers. The soldiers derided him. They mocked him. They spat on him. They stole his garments. They dressed him up king-like. And they crushed his brow with a crown of thorns. They made him carry his crucifixion cross until he collapsed. And then they pressed Simon of Cyrene into service, coming to the place of the skull. They lay him on that cross and drove spikes into his hands and feet. Lifting the cross up with his dilapidated body upon it, they drove him and it into the ground with a joint-wrenching thud, further traumatizing his body and adding to his agony. He was hung in public humiliation. Hung on a cross between two bandits. Just another rejected piece of society's refuse. And then the crowd, the crowd passed before him, shaking their heads at him, mocking him, taunting him, laughing at him, letting him know that he was a nothing to them, a nobody. This processing crowd was led by the chief priests and the scribes, the holy men of Israel, those entrusted with keeping God's holy law, the righteous, and the high-up bosses of the faith. Darkness 
began to come upon that scene at noon. And by three o'clock, it was very dark indeed. Darkness had inexplicably come over the city of Jerusalem. At three o'clock, precisely the hour of prayer in ritualistic Judaism, at three o'clock, the hour of prayer when a lamb is offered as a whole burnt offering to God on the high altar in the temple, the darkness was suddenly pierced by the loud shout of the dying Messiah who cried out from the Psalms, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It was the cry of dereliction from a forsaken man, an abandoned savior, the utterly destroyed Messiah. And he breathed his last. These words literally mean he was blown out like a candle. He was blown out like a candle surrounded by the darkest night. And in the subtlety of this text in Mark, concurrent with Jesus' breathing his last, the temple curtain that separated the Holy of Holies from the common area of the temple is split in two. It is torn from top to bottom. It is a miracle affected by God. It is linked in this scripture as though a miraculous wind from Jesus' last gasp tears this separating cloth apart, asunder, and God is once and for all always accessible to humankind. And so the Palm Sunday parade has come to an end. His end. Or so everyone thought. Hope has finally been destroyed. All that was left to do after the parade was to clean up the garbage. All that was left to do was to bury the body. And one battle-hardened centurion who had seen it all and had understood his long history of military violence. He was standing there on duty next to that cross, and he spoke out in a loud centurion kind of voice for all to hear within earshot. And with his military bearing, he declared, truly, this man was God's son. How ironic that this Gentile soldier's voice should at that very moment echo the voice of God from back when Jesus was baptized. God said, you are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And in this manner, in literary form, it ties the Gospel of Mark, story of Jesus, together from its beginning and now to this point of its climax. And from a pagan. What was it about Jesus' crucifixion that so impressed the centurion who was well acquainted with violence We never know. He never says. Centurions, you see, do not explain themselves. But I like to think that a centurion understands the call to place the mission first above oneself. A centurion understands 
the call to endure the unendurable. A centurion understands the call to display the consistency of character that all the best leaders have and in witnessing Jesus' endurance of all these things, exceeding anything he could possibly even imagine, this pagan Roman centurion concluded, truly this man was God's son. On this week, which we call Holy Week, we once again remember the Palm Sunday Parade that begins with loud hosannas and ends in the crucifixion of the Christ. As you stand by the foot of the cross this week and remember Jesus Christ crucified, What will your testimony be? Let us stand for the
Please be seated. Let us bring our tithes and our offerings and our one great hour of sharing commitment to the Christ. pray. Gracious Lord, we stand and sing our songs of Hosanna. We praise you for coming to save us and effecting there on the cross our full and complete salvation for us. We ask that you would receive these tithes and offerings and use them to spread the good news of the gospel in this place and throughout the world. We ask you to bless the one great hour of sharing offerings. And our hearts are warmed as we see the many fish the children completed and contributed to. Add your blessing to this offering to do great things throughout the world. Comfort your people, Lord God, especially Robert Tao and his family, even as you receive his wife, Romaine, to yourself. Bless all those who are herein noted in our insert and bulletin 
Give them what they need. Heal the sick. Encourage the downtrodden. Grant your perfect peace to troubled hearts and minds. And now be with us as yet again we take to our lips the prayer that Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn is number 196. of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. <laughs> 